This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 2-5, the graph of y equals kx squared. In Lesson 2-4, we looked at the graph of y equals kx, and that was actually to the power of 1. So now we're going to see how they differ, and we're going to begin doing that with the situation here. Braking distance is simply the distance needed to stop a vehicle after applying the brake. Braking distance varies directly with the square of a vehicle's speed. So here's a situation that is a direct squared variation. It's represented by the formula d equals 1 over 20 s squared. And we have a table of values that are generated. So if your car is traveling at 10 miles per hour, you need 20 feet of braking distance. If it's traveling at 30 miles per hour, you need 45 feet of braking distance. You'll notice the graph over here. It's starts at 0, 0, and then progresses up in a curve. When we looked at direct variations, we had a constant rate of change. Our value for k represented the slope of a line. But when we look at direct squared variation, we won't find the same thing. The points in the graph above do not lie in a straight line. You can verify this by calculating the slopes of lines through different pairs of points on the graph and seeing that they are not equal. I'd like to take an, uh, and look at a few different points, specifically points 10, 5, 20, 20, and 50, 1, 25. And check, so basically we have three points and we're going to, to see that the slope between each set of points is not the same. So let's look at 10, 5, and 20, 20. So we're going to use that same slope equation that we used in algebra and geometry and in lesson 2, 4, change in y over change in x. So 20 minus 5 is 15, 20 minus 10 is 10. So that means that when I'm looking at the, the difference between 10 miles per hour and 20 miles per hour, my rate of change between those two points is 1.5. So what does that mean? You'll see over here in red. 1.5 feet per mile per, how, per mile per hour on average when driving between 10 miles per hour and 20 miles per hour. For each increase of 1 mile per hour in speed, you need 1.5 more feet to stop your car. So let's look at the rate of change from 2020 to 50, 125. Use our slope, very, or slope equation again. 125 minus the 20 over 50 minus the 20 gives me a rate of change of 105 over 30, which is 3.5. So as our speed was increasing, we actually need more feet, more space to stop. So for every 3.5 feet per miles per hour, on average that is between s speed of 20 and speed of 50, for every change in one mile per hour, there is a change of 3.5 feet of braking distance. By calculating those two different slopes, you find that the rate of change is not the same when studying or when looking at a direct squared variation. So I have some more bullet points down here that I'd like to go through. You'll see the graphic here on the right, similar to the graphic that you saw when we studied the direct variation to the power of 1. Some main points that are very important for you to, to remember when looking and studying the graph of y equals kx squared. When k is not equal to 0, the graph is a parabola. So as you see here, we get a graph of a parabola. Notice these graphs all pass through the origin, 0, 0. Also, each parabola is reflection symmetric. So if, if you notice here, the, the y-axis is its line of symmetry. When k is greater than 0, the graph opens upward. And when it's less than 0, it opens downward. When it opens upward, the vertex is our minimum value, our minimum point. And when it opens downward, our vertex is our maximum point. When we look specifically at the graph, k is when k is greater than 0 and the graph opens upward, we evaluate our domain. Once again, our domain, there is no restriction. Looking at the horizontal x-axis here, there is no place that that parabola is not going to go horizontally. But if we look at it vertically, our graph is only in the coordin or in um, coordinates, or I'm sorry, quadrants 1 and 2. So we say that the range then is a set of all values greater than or equal to 0. We want to make sure to include 0 because it goes through the origin, but it's always greater. 
always positive value. So we say it's greater than or equal to zero. Now when we look at the values of k or the graph when k is less than zero, once again the domain is a set of all reals. There's nowhere that that graph is not going in a horizontal direction. But when we look at the range, everything's opening downward, so we know that it includes zero, but everything less than it also. So we say that the range is the set of values less than or equal to zero. This concludes lesson two five.